Hi, this is Ali Arango, and today I would like to show you how to rig motorcycle wheels in Blender 2.77. So let's get started. Okay, if this is your first time in Blender, I recommend you go to File, User Preferences, and then Input, and then choose Select with left click. Blender's default select is with right click, and this may confuse you if you're coming from Adobe programs or other 3D programs. Also, while you're in here, go to add-ons and then put a check mark here right next to 3D view colon 3D navigation and then scroll all the way down and then also put a check mark next to user interface colon pi menus official. Okay, when you first come into Blender, typically you are in object mode. If you look right here, you can see which mode we're in. Also, when you click here, you have access to most of the modes in Blender. One of the modes that we'll be uh, using as we work our way through this uh, process of rigging these motorcycle wheels is pose mode. Now, you don't see pose mode currently here because uh, we need to add some armature bones first. Once we add them and then you click on one of those bones, then you'll also see the option for pose mode here as well. Okay, one of the ways to manipulate your view in Blender is if you hold the middle mouse button, that will allow you to manipulate your view. Also, if you press the T key to bring up this uh, tools panel, as a matter of fact, most of the time in Blender, this uh, tools panel will be up by default. If you click on uh, this navigation tab, you can click these buttons here to easily navigate your view. Okay, what you see here is the result of another tutorial I did where I showed how to model a motorcycle. As a matter of fact, I'll put a link up here so you can get to that tutorial. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click here to go to right view. And currently with this motorcycle mesh, uh, these tires are part of the mesh, we need to separate them. So with this mesh uh, selected, we're gonna click here and then go to edit mode. Okay, I had some previous geometry here selected, so I'll press A to deselect that geometry. Okay, so I want to make sure that this tire is, uh, for the most part, separated from this geometry. One of the ways I can do that is by making sure I'm on face select, then hovering my mouse here and then pressing the uh, L button. So I'm going to hold them in the mouse button to rotate the view slightly. I'm going to hover my mouse here, then I'm going to press the L key. And we can see that this tire is attached to uh, this right here, this geometry. I just want the tire. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press press and hold shift. Then while holding shift, press B. I'm going to then draw a zoom box right here. And now what I'm going to do is uh, go to edge select. In Blender, you have vertice select here, edge select here, as well as face select here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press A to uh, deselect that geometry. I'm then going to click here to go to Edge Select. I'm then going to hold down Alt and then select this edge right here. Because I held down Alt, I selected that entire edge loop right there. Now what I'm going to do is press V, then I'm going to left click to lock in that selection. And what happened was when I sit, when I press V, what I called selection, whatever, when I uh, pressed V, I separated this edge right here from this geometry here. Okay, now with that done, now I should be able to go to face select, hover my mouse here, and then press the L key. And now you can see I am just selecting the tire, which is what we want. Okay, with that done, what I'm gonna do is press the P key. This brings up our separate menu, and then I'm gonna choose selection. Okay, you can tell by this color that uh, this tire now it's its own separate object which is what we wanted so now I'm gonna hold down control and then hold the middle mouse button to pull back so I can zoom out I'm then gonna hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan I'm then gonna hover here I have face select on so I'm gonna hover here and then press L we can see here that this tire is being selected without having any uh, connected geometry being connected to it which is what we want so we're going to press P to bring up our separate menu. Then we're going to choose selection. Okay, currently we are in this motorcycle mesh inside of, you know, the edit mode of the motorcycle mesh. So what we're going to do is click here, then go to object mode. And then now that we are here in object mode, we're going to click on this object now. 
I'm going to press the N uh, key to bring up this properties panel. And then uh, we can see that this is named cylinder. So we're going to rename this to weir will underscore one. My mouth today struggling. Anyway, uh, uh, yeah, we renamed that will one. So uh, what we are going to do is we're going to click here and then go to right view. Now what we want is this uh, orange dot right here. This is our point of origin. We want this orange dot to be directly in the center here of the uh, geometry, you know, for this uh, motorcycle wheel. So there's actually multiple ways to do that. So what we're going to try, though, is we're going to go to Object, Transform, and then we're going to go to Origin to Geometry and see that point of origin is directly in the center of this wheel, which is... Uh, what we wanted so that worked out very well okay what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold down control hold them in a mouse button to uh, zoom back I'm gonna hold shift them in a mouse button to pan now I'm gonna click here and we can see this is named cylinder 2 so I'm gonna click here and uh, rename this wheel underscore 2 then press enter to lock that in Okay, and looking at this wheel, if we look over here, we can see the origin point is way over there, and that is uh, most likely the result of this wheel, you know, previously being part of this mesh. So what we'll do with this wheel selected is we'll go to Object, Transform, and then Origin to Geometry. And uh, again, that worked out very well as our origin point is directly in the center. of our mesh just making sure that it's actually in the center sometimes you'll you'll think that the origin points in the center and it will be in, in the center as far as the side but not as far as the front okay looks good and currently we have a mirror modifier on this wheel as well as this wheel. What we're going to do is actually click here to apply that. Then we'll click here and apply that. So what I just applied was when I showed you how to make this motorcycle model, uh, I put a mirror modifier on this mesh. And because these two uh, wheels here were part of that mesh when I separated these, they came out of this mesh as their own objects also having a mirror modifier applied to them. So what I did just now was I just clicked on the mirror modifier to apply it, you know, uh, just to make things simpler as we work our way uh, through this tutorial. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to click here to go to right view. We're then going to click here uh, to select this uh, first tire. We're now going to hold down shift and then while holding shift, press S. This brings up our snap to menu. We're then going to choose cursor to selected. Okay, what that did was that put our cursor, our 3D cursor, right here, uh, which is what where we want it to be. And the reason why we want this cursor to be right here is where your 3D cursor it at that where your 3D cursor is at in Blender is where objects tend to come into, as far as Blender. So we want to add a bone, and we need that bone to be exactly in the center, uh, right here, like right starting off from this origin point. So. Now that we have our 3D cursor there, we're set up to have our armature bone come in right there, right where we need it to be. So I'm going to press and hold shift, and then while holding shift, press A. This brings us brings up our add uh, to menu, and we want to then go to armature and then select single bone. So a bone just popped in. It's slightly difficult to see. What we can do is uh, so click here, then go to x-ray, and then uh, we can see our bone right there. So currently we're in the object of our bone, or, or selected on the object of our bone, which is named armature, right? Now with this armature bone selected, I'm going to click here and then go to edit mode. So now we're inside the object of that armature, or this particular armature bone. Okay, as I learned how to do this technique, I actually had watched uh, various tutorials on uh, rigging wheels. The one that I learned the most from was from a YouTube user by the name of 
Sharanavez Kumar. And uh, if you are interested in learning more about this technique, I recommend you go check out his YouTube channel of the same name. Uh, so let's continue. Okay, so with this first bone, we're going to click here. And then we can click right here and change the name of this bone. So we're going to click there and we're going to rename this Rotor. Then I'm going to press enter to lock that in. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to click right here on the tail of the bone. We're then going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. We're then going to take our manipulator and then push this extrusion out that way. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I am going to click this button right here to temporarily take away our manipulator. I'm going to click this bone, then I'm going to click here. Since I have that bone selected from clicking on it, then I'm going to name this Turner, then press enter to lock that name in. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this bone right here. I'm then going to press and hold shift, and then while holding shift, press D, then left click to lock that in. And what that did was I just duplicated this bone right here. So I'm going to click here to turn our manipulator back on. And then I have the duplicated bone selected. So I'm going to take the manipulator and push this bone forward to about there. With this bone still selected, I'm going to click here. And then I'm going to name this bone director. Then press enter to lock that name in. Okay, what I'm going to do now is press A to deselect that bone. I'm then going to click this bone right here. I'm then going to press and hold shift. And then while holding shift, press D and then left click to lock that action. And what I did was I just duplicated it, that bone right there. I'm then going to take the manipulator and pull this bone straight up to about here. I'm then going to press S to scale to make this bone bigger. Then I'm going to left click to lock that scale in. Okay, with this bone selected, I'm going to click here, and then I'm going to rename this bone header, and then press enter to lock that name in. Okay, in most of my rigging tutorials, I try to point out that I think it's very important that as you go through a rigging process that you're very aware of what mode you're in as you're, you know, going through your rigging process. So currently, just be aware we're in edit mode. You tend to set up bones as far as parenting them in edit mode so currently we're in edit mode so what we need to do is we need to click this bone which we named rotor with that bone selected we need to hold shift and then while holding shift click this bone right here all right the order is also important we click you know first rotor and then second the uh turner bone here so with those bones selected in that particular order you're going to hold down control and then while holding control, press P. Uh, that brings up our make parent menu. You have two options. You want to choose the option that says keep offset. Okay, what we're going to do now is press A to deselect. We're now going to click on our Turner bone here. And then with this bone selected, we're going to hold down shift. And then while holding shift, we're going to click this bone. Again, the order is important. First, we clicked our Turner bone. Then we clicked our header bone and with these bones selected in that particular order, we're going to hold down control and then while holding control, press P. Our make parent menu pops up. We have two options in that make parent menu connected and keep offset. You want to choose the keep offset option. Okay, what we're going to do now is press A to deselect. We're then going to click on our director bone. We're then going to hold shift. And then while holding shift, click on our header bone. I'm then going to hold down control. And then while holding control, press P. This brings up our make parent option. We have our two options again, connected as well as keep offset. I would like you to choose keep offset. Okay, so what we're going to do now is press A to deselect. We're currently in edit mode. In edit mode, as far as dealing with armature bones, you tend to set up parenting there. Because we are in the edit mode of an armature bone, we can click here and then go to pose mode. Okay, here we are in pose mode, and pose mode is where you tend to set up constraints as far as dealing with bones. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on our rotor bone. We're then going to click on our bone constraints button right here. We can see this says add a bone constraint, so we're going to click here. And then the constraint that we want to add is the transformation constraint. 
Okay, as far as working with this bone constraint, that is our uh, transformation constraint, we're going to click here. We need to select armature. This represents all of our bones, all right? So even though it says armature, think of this as like uh, all of the armature bones are represented by this when it says armature. So I'm going to click here. Uh, and when I say all of the armatures for this particular group, because we're technically doing with an armature as far as it being like an object and as far as the objects in that particular armature. Sometimes you can have multiple objects and then inside of each object, multiple arm armature bones. However, I don't want to confuse you. Anyway, so currently we have on, uh, we have selected our rotor bone. We're going to click here and what we want to do is we want to target our header bone. So we'll just click here on header. Okay, and as we go through this, basically what's going to happen is I'm going to tell you uh, the settings that you should put for each constraint. You can play with the settings later on to experiment with them. I'm going to generally tell you what works so that we can get through this fairly uh, quickly. Okay, so we're still dealing with our rotor bone with the uh, trans uh, transformative constraint. Pay attention to this. The source is location, rotation, scale. You want currently to be on location, all right? So with this being selected on location, then you want to look towards this Y, and then looking towards this Y, you want to click here, and then with this selected, I'm going to put in negative 2, then I'm going to press enter to lock that in. It looks like 2 here. That's mainly because of the distance of this panel. If I hover here and then pull out some, you can see that that's actually negative 2, which is what you want. I'm going to click here and then enter 2, then press enter to lock that value in. Okay, so with uh, the source for location, you know, uh, being selected and our Y setting set up as far as negative 2, and then two right here. Now we look towards our source to destination mapping. Currently we have X, Y, Z. We want to change this X to a Y. So we're going to click here and then select Y. Okay, so previously it said X, Y, Z. Now, since we changed it, it says Y, Y, Z, even though here we can still see it says X, Y, Z. So let me not confuse you. The reason why I'm saying this is that when I went through I believe that I went through and I didn't notice this. So long story short, I'm going out of my way. So did you notice it? So again, these settings here should be Y, Y, Z. Okay, now that we have these settings set up here, we're going to scroll down and we're going to look at these settings for destination. Currently, it says location. We do not want this uh, destination setting to be location. We want this to be rotation. So we're going to click here so that now destination is set for rotation. Okay, with this destination set for rotation, right, we are set up for the next step. Now, I'm a visual guy, so I tend to, to look at things. My eyes, you know, go right for the visual stuff. So when I look at this, I'm like, oh, okay, we chose destination, rotation. Therefore, we have settings here. These settings are under location. We have these settings here under rotation, and we have these settings under scale. Uh, and I'll be like, okay, well, we're going to work right here because this is rotation. Don't do that, all right? We were set for location. Now we are set for rotation as far as the destination. However, we are not dealing with the numbers directly under rotation. We are dealing with the numbers here. So... What you want to do is click here, and then you want to enter in for this top value, 3, 6, 0, and then press enter to lock that in. And then for the bottom value here, you're going to click here, and then you're going to enter negative 3, 6, 0, and then press enter to lock that in. Okay, by the way, for anybody who is new to uh, my tutorials, particularly, uh, particularly my rigging tutorials, Please do not get upset the way I try to explain things in a fairly exact detail. The reason why I explain things like that is issues that I went through myself. I do not want you to go through those same issues, particular issues that I dealt with. I'll put 
extra emphasis just trying to make sure that you don't have to go through it. So actually rather you get annoyed at me trying to be exact in my descriptions rather than having to go through uh, you know, some of the issues that I've gone through in the past. Anyway, uh, continuing on, when you look at space and it says world space here as well as world space here, world space here is fine, leave that. However, world space here, you wanna click this and then change this to local space. Okay, one last thing you wanna do as far as dealing with our rotor bone here, as well as our transformation constraint here, is you wanna put a check mark here right next to extrapolate. Okay, and the purpose for all of those settings in dealing with that transformation bone constraint is that now when you go forward, this bone will spin. So let's move on. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is click here on our Turner bone, and then we are going to scroll up here, click here, and then we are going to add a track two constraint. Right there. For the Turner bone, with the track two constraint, what we want to do is click here. We're then going to select armature. Again, that represents all of the bones inside of our armature. Now we're going to click here and then we're going to select director. Okay, and as far as the settings for that, uh, we're good for the uh, settings for that track two constraint on our Turner bone. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to click on our director bone. Okay, and with our director bone selected, we're going to click here, and then we're going to select a limit location restraint. Okay, as far as setting up the settings for the limit location constraint, if you look at row one right here, leave these settings empty. If you look at row two right here, leave these settings empty. When you go to row three, you wanna put a check mark next to minimum, and then you wanna put a check mark next to maximum as well. Okay, as far as the settings for this limit location constraint, other than the two check marks right there, the rest of the settings will remain as they were as far as the default setups. Okay, so now that we have the work that we did as far as parenting done in edit mode all done and we have our constraints set up that we did here in pose mode, I'm just gonna hold the middle mouse button and turn to the side just to make sure the bones are in the correct place, and they are. I'm then gonna click here to go back to the right view. I'm then gonna press A to deselect. Okay, as far as dealing with parenting bones, you tend to do that in edit mode. As far as setting up bone constraints, you, as far as I know, do that in pose mode. What we wanna do now is go back to edit mode. So we're in pose mode, so now we're clicking here, and now we're going to edit mode. Okay, the reason why we came here to edit mode is we have the bone set up to deal with one motorcycle wheel. However, we have two motorcycle wheels. So what we're gonna do is press A to select all of the bones here. We're then gonna hold shift and then press D to duplicate those bones and then left click to lock in that command to make a duplicate of all of these bones. Okay, and with those duplicate bones selected, what we're gonna do is take our manipulator and pull straight back. And we just want to line up so that this bone is in the center of, you know, right here. Okay, what we're going to do now is press A to deselect them. Then I'm going to click here to go to object mode. Okay, the reason why we came to object mode is to prepare ourselves to parent our wheels to the rotor bones that they need to be parented to. Okay, now this right here is our entire armature. We need one Pacific armature bone out of what's called the armature, which you can see right here, right? So if we select the wheel and then just parent uh, the wheel to the armature, we don't know where that wheel is being parented to. We need this wheel to be parented to this rotor bone right here. So how do we do that when, when we click here, everything is selected? Well, the way that we can do it is with this armature, selected and only this armature currently selected 
we're going to click here and then go into pose mode. Okay, now here in pose mode, we can click here and we can see that this is the only bone currently selected, right? So with that done, what we can do is we can click this wheel. Now when I click this wheel, what's going to happen is Blender is going to take us back into object mode. So you can see we're no longer in pose mode. Now we are in object mode. Okay, and I'm going to click this button to temporarily take away our manipulator. Okay, so while we are in object mode, because we were just in pose mode and we just selected the particular bone that we wanted, Blender remembers that we were just in pose mode and that we were on that particular bone. So we can take advantage of that by having our wheel selected and then holding shift and then while holding shift, clicking on our armature. So what happened was is it's not so much that as far as I know that when I clicked the armature that I clicked right on this particular spot. Blender knew that we were working with this armature or wanted to work with this armature because when we were just previously in pose mode, we had selected this armature. So anyway, with first that wheel select selected, I just took my hand off of the shift button. So with the wheel selected first, and then holding shift, which that brought us into pose mode in and, you know, the wheel being selected first, the bone being selected second. Now we can hold down control and then while holding control, press P. And this brings up our set parent to menu and then we'll select bone. So, yes, while I said, you know, for the most part, you parent bones in edit mode, that's why I tend to say tends to <laughs> because there seems to be a. Uh, things where, you know, for the most part, you'll do one particular activity in one area of Blender, but then there's specific instances like this where, you know, you actually go ahead and you, you do set up your parenting in pose mode. Okay, so let's set up this other wheel. So what we're going to do is press A to deselect. So currently we have no bone selected. We want to work with this bone right here. So we're going to click on that bone, right? So now that we're clicked on this bone and only this bone, we're going to click this wheel. When I click this wheel, we're currently in pose mode. However, when I click this wheel, we should be taking into object mode. So now we're in object mode. However, Blender should remember that we were just selected on this particular bone right here. So now with this wheel selected, I am now pressing shift, right? As of, as of just now. So now I'm, I'm pressing and holding down shift and while pressing and holding down shift, I am now going to click here. So now we have the correct order. First, this will being selected and then we held shift. Now we're back in pose mode. So this was selected first, this was selected second. So what we're gonna do is uh, hold down control and then while holding control, press P. This brings up our set parent to menu. We're then going to choose bone. Okay, we are almost done. However, we do need to add one more bone. So I'm going to hold down control and then hold down the middle mouse button to zoom back some. We're currently in pose mode. I want to add a bone in. So we're going to go to edit mode to do that. So I'm going to click here and then go to edit mode. So I'm going to press A to select that bone. I'm then going to click this bone, hold shift. And then while holding shift, click this bone. I'm then going to hold shift and then press S to bring up our snap to menu. I'm then going to choose cursor to selected. Okay, and I just did that so that this 3D cursor would be between these two bones right here. And just so you know, that's just out of personal preference. This bone that we're about to add in doesn't have to be, you know, directly in between these two bones or anything, right? So anyway, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press... Uh, Shift A to bring another bone in. I want this bone to go that way. So I have three cursors here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press and hold shift. Then while pressing and holding shift, I'm going to press S. And then I'm going to choose selection to cursor offset. It looks like our bone disappeared. It didn't. What I did was we had the head of the bone selected. And then I snapped that head down to the 3D cursor. I'm going to click here to turn our manipulator back on. Then I'm just going to push out here. I know it looks small there. I'm going to hold shift and then while holding shift, press B, draw a zoom box. So you can see so there's our bone. Let me temporarily turn off the manipulator so I can select this. 
I'm going to hold down control, then hold down the middle mouse button. I am then going to turn our manipulator back on, pull this bone up some, then press S to scale. Then I'll press S to scale again to make that bone bigger. I'll then press A to deselect that bone. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click this bone, then I'm going to click here and name this main handle, and then press enter to lock that name in. Okay, what we're going to do now is press A to deselect. I'm then going to click and select this bone. I'm then going to hold shift. Then while holding shift, I'm going to click this bone. And then after those two bones have been selected first, I am going to click the bone that I want those other two bones parented to last. So I'm holding shift and then I'm clicking this bone. So now with the bone selected in that particular order, I'm going to hold down control. And then while holding control, I'm going to press P. This brings up our make parent menu. I am then going to choose keep offset and I want you to choose keep offset as well. Okay, what we're going to do now is press A to deselect. I'm then going to click here, then go to object mode. I'm then going to press A to deselect. I'm going to click on our armature and then I'm going to click here and then go to pose mode. I did that particular order just because that's how I like to do things. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click here on our main handle bone. I'm not holding shift. I'm not holding anything or pressing anything. Now I am pressing on our uh, main motorcycle mesh right here. So now with that selected, I am, uh, and by the way, that's currently called cylinder. Uh, with that selected, uh, I'm going to hold down shift and then click here. So with our main motorcycle uh, mesh selected, and then Blender remembering that we had previously selected this bone right here. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to press and hold control and then press P. And then that brings up our set parent to menu. And then I'm going to select bone. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is press N to take away that properties panel. And then I'm going to click here. Now we're in pose mode, remember that. So I'm going to click on our main mover. And now you can see when I push forward and back, you can see our motorcycle wheels rotating there. Okay, I'm going to hold them in the mouse button to rotate the view. And if I click here and then move this back and forth, you can see our tire rotating there, which is what we want. So I'm going to right click to get that to jump right back into place. If I click here, you can see that if we press R to rotate on the X axis, and have our motorcycle doing a wheelie, right? When we press forward, our motorcycle tires still rotate. And then even with this uh, tire in the air like this, we can, you know, still rotate our wheel. I'll click here and you can see still, even with this uh, wheel turn that our tires are still moving. And, uh, you know, I like that. Okay, with our main handle selected and our motorcycle in a wheelie position, if I press R to rotate on the Z axis, even as our motorcycle turns from side to side, you can see our bones still remain in place and our constraints are still working as they should. Okay, and with this selected here, I'm going to hold Alt and then press R. And what that did was by holding Alt and then pressing R, it just reset the rotation of uh, this particular bone. And then if I click right here, if I hold Alt and then press G, I reset the location of this particular bone. Okay, guys, that's it for the tutorial. For all of those of you out there who like the videos on this channel and reshare them, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And to those of you who are new to this channel, if you like the videos on this channel and you would like to see more, please subscribe. Also, as far as supporting this channel, there's a few ways you can do that. One of the ways is by giving donations. If you look to your upper right hand corner, if you click on that eye, that'll take you to a place where you can leave a donation for this channel and donations help as far as having motivation to make more tutorials, as well as actually allowing me to have more time to make more tutorials. Another way you can support this channel is by following me on Instagram as well as on Twitter. And you can get to the Instagram account that I post uh, content on by going to the home page of my YouTube channel as well as my Twitter account. 
And as always, guys, thanks for viewing.